Hello, everyone. Welcome to Clone Knits. My name is Claudia, and you're watching the Clone Knits podcast. This is the second episode, and I'm super excited to see you all again. If you just discovered my channel, please take a little time to click the thumbs up or leave a comment and maybe even consider subscribing. I'm going to be doing a podcast every other week, and I'm hoping to bring you another video every other week uh, with different subjects and possibly tutorials. Soon I've gotten a few requests already for English tutorials, so we shall see about that. Uh, today is, um, when I'm filming, is Tuesday, uh, December, uh, December, February 7th. <laughs> it is a beautiful day in Montreal where I live. It We just had a really crazy cold spell, and I'm pretty sure everybody in the world understand what I'm saying because we're not the only ones that had a really cold spell, but in Montreal it got into the minus 30, I think the lowest was minus 39 degrees Celsius, which they were saying um, to, to be careful because you could get frostbites within five to 10 minutes of being outside. So um, we spent a lot of time indoors uh, over the weekend because the weekend was the coldest part of uh, the cold spell. And uh, we spent time inside with friends playing board games, knitting and uh, letting the kids play inside. And uh, yeah, wearing all our super thick and uh, warm knits. And by the way, if you've been uh, watching my videos, you might notice that I'm wearing these days this hat particularly, but a hat. And uh, yeah, I basically spend all winter with a hat on. I take it off sometimes, but I just really enjoy wearing a hat in the winter. And we're the kind of people that um don't put the heating super high uh because one it's you know expensive <laughs> two it is also not very eco-friendly to be running uh the electricity so high all the time so i'd rather have a cooler house and wear woolens so i will i'll be wearing my big knits i'll be wearing knitted socks and slippers i'll oftentimes be wearing a hat in the winter and uh, when I work at my computer, I often have to like put a shawl on or something like that. And I don't really mind it, meaning like I'm not, I, I don't wish that my house was necessarily warmer in the winter, even though I don't really love winter. <laughs> I don't like cold temperatures outside. I'd rather go outside and be warm, but being cold inside with my big woolens is not a big deal for me. Weird, huh? Are you like me? Do you do you understand what I'm saying? Anyway. Have my little latte. It's still warm, so I'm going to try and drink it while it's warm, which is never happening when I'm filming it. I just let it cool down and then reheat it and drink it later. <laughs> um, so what I'm wearing is, well, first of all, I just talked about the hat. So let me present to you this hat, which is my favorite one right now. It is, I'll take it off for you, even though my hair is a mess. Don't, don't mind it, please. Um, it's a super cute pattern. It is called the Clovis hat by Camille Decoto. Um, if you're from elsewhere than uh, Canada watching this, you might be discovering a lot of Canadian designers, which I'm really hoping um, turns out that way because we have so many talented Canadian designers and Quebecois designers. Um, please go check them out on Ravelry or wherever they're selling their patterns. So this one is the Clovis and um, Camille Decoto is one of my favorite designers. She does amazing thing. Her brain works in such a crazy way. Anyway, it is a pattern that's knit from the bottom up with this, you know, very simple quadrant decrease, but it has those little wrapped stitches that create this cute little pattern um, and it has a double brim which is absolutely 100% needed in Canadian winter. Um, what this one the, the, the pattern is originally meant for two fingering uh, weight yarn held double and uh, you could knit it also with a worsted weight but the fact that you have two yarn and you're holding them double makes those little wraps look even cuter. And I decided to add a mohair to it 
still keeping the same gauge, the same needles, but just making a thicker, denser fabric, which is uh, my solution. When people ask, how do you knit really warm hats? Because generally, problem with knitted hats is the wind will still go through them and I my ears always get cold so for me it's it has to be a doubled brim it has to be rustic yarn to be at its warmest and then it has to be held together with a mohair or a surrey or something that will you know create a denser fabric or like uh, what's the word I'm looking for fill all the little gaps right all those little fibers mohair fibers will like fill the little gaps in the stitches and create more of a, a a warm layer so this is what i did for this one the yarn is called um the fingering weight is urso yarn co um and it's the new base it's one of my favorite yarns of all times it is a untreated non-treated bfl two ply gorgeous yarn the color my husband's coming home all right um it is color i think was one of a kind it was a miel which is which which means honey but it was uh a little bit of a different bath so it turned out a little different and i made a sweater out of this yarn and this is the leftover i'll show you the sweater one day for sure it's one of my favorites um so i held this double and i had a leftover like yellow mohair from knit picks i believe that i held with it so that's it that's my favorite hat it has a, a little bit of space up here but not much for me i could wear it a little higher but i like it and the sweater is also a very warm sweater you might recognize it if you you know you've been on social media <laughs> in life it is the september sweater by petite knit which everybody knows petite knit um it is a fully brioche sweater but it's a one color brioche so it's not very complicated it is knit top down with a uh with a drop shoulder fit and very very big arms so this is this is my arm and this is my armpit <laughs> so literally all of this is extra but this was what i wanted for the sweater i believe i knit the smallest size but as you can tell smallest size doesn't mean doesn't mean small and it has this little like doubled up collar I guess it's a theme today of doubled up and uh it's super duper comfy because I knit it in a yarn that's super special to me it is a Nutiden yarn um if you haven't heard of them it, the company is called Oner Ok Air, and I'm pretty sure I'm I'm saying that all wrong because it is a Swedish company and I've been to Sweden multiple times still I cannot speak Swedish <laughs> but um, Oner Ok Air is um, only produces Nutiden yarn it is an unspun yarn similar to Plotulopi but very I've, I've heard it's different in feeling I haven't knit with Plotulopi yet but I will soon uh, I intend on making a video comparing all the unspun yarns that I know of or I have access to. So it's two uh, strands of Nutiden plus a strand of mohair because I wanted to add extra floofiness to it. Nutiden is already pretty floofy, but the extra mohair was like, you know, w might as well. <laughs> and um, I'm really happy with it. It, it pills like mad. But I just, you know, pluck it out and um, I think I've, I've gleaned it once with my gleaner. But like those pills are just basically big, thick things that I can just pull at because the yarn is unspun. It doesn't, you know, it, it will always pill a little bit. Like I, I, I've had quite my fair share of Nutiden orders because, you know, I started ordering it a while back and then I fell in love with it. And then I've now knit one, two, three, four. Wait a second. I have the September sweater, which is this one. I have a 
my, the first sweater I knit and knew to then was a uh, Jennifer Steingast pattern. And I don't wear that one that much. I might end up giving it away just because I think it's a little... The style doesn't fit my lifestyle so much. Anyway, and then I knit the throwback sweater. And then I knit a... Yeah, my red one. And I have one with uh, four... Yeah, I knit, I knit five Nutiden sweaters and I have two Nutiden shawls. Um, I went a little overboard <laughs> because it's a yarn that you can only buy when it comes out. Like it comes out and then people jump on it, buy it, and it comes out once a month. Um, and so it's kind of a fear of missing out. FOMO, as we call it sometimes, and so I sta I, I stocked up on Nutiden yarn, and uh, their colors are just so incredible. And now I, I have I have enough. I, I I've I've and you'll see that I'm actually knitting another sweater out of Nutiden right now. So <laughs> this is a, this is one of the ones I've wear the most. Um, it's definitely almost like a sweater, uh, a coat. Sometimes I wear it like if I'm going snowshoeing or something, I'll put it over something with long sleeves and like layer things and I can take off my coat and be comfortable in this sweater. Um, I, I knit it per pattern, didn't change anything. It was very fast and meditative. Am I putting the accent in the right place in the word? I don't know. Um, to knit because of the brioche and... Ta -da! that's it that's it for that one uh i will not tell you the name of the colorway because as as i told you the colors of knitted and yarn is uh one off every month is different so even if you wanted to get this color you probably would not be able to so let's talk about things i finished recently so but i rewatched part of or I scrolled through the podcast to see what I had talked about last time or not, because since I'm doing a French podcast and an English podcast, I want to make sure I talk about everything on, on both. Uh, but then my brain goes like, wait a second, I, I know I spoke about this item, but did I speak about it in my English podcast or did I speak about it in my French podcast? So if I repeat myself, then you'll know that it's because too many too many things um and i'm trying to oh there's a mistake in my sock hmm, just noticed it um yeah i'm trying i'm doing my uh english podcast as you can tell on wednesday and then the friday prior to that wednesday is when i do the french podcast so in general i'll be speaking about the same thing that i speak in my french podcast i might have new cast ons and things like that on my english one but don't worry if you're french and you're watching the french one i'll talk about it in the next one I'm so I knit those socks since the last time I saw you <laughs> and uh, they were quite quick because they are DK weight socks or double stranded fingering weight socks. These are the bear paw pattern by Andrea Mari and you will um, please uh, forgive the fact that they've been worn. <laughs> the two pairs of socks that I'm going to show you today have been worn a lot already and they look like worn socks. That's that. So these are the bare paw socks and they are, like I said, holding two strands of fingering weight yarn together to create a worse or DK weight sock. It's uh, Andrea's, it's based on Andrea Mari's uh, ev DRK everyday sock pattern that she has and I've done it before. And then she recently released the DK weight version, which is called the bare paw. And in the bare paw socks, she does this thing where she's holding I think color A, uh, double at the point, and then, and then I think she's holding color B, double for a few rows, and then she's got holding color A and B all through the sock together, and she's doing a contrasting heel somehow, and then she does the same thing up top. I knew that I didn't have enough of this color to hold it through the entire sock, so I did it a little bit different. Uh, so I held color A double here. I had one strand of color A with one strand of color B for a few rows. Color B all along. One, one here. So one strand of each. And then the same thing as I did bottom here, up top here. So this yarn that is so beautiful and colorful and I love it, is um, 
by Simple Sorcière uh, she's a Quebecois dyer and this is her uh, Sauvage base which is a single ply with nylon uh, sock yarn rustic sock yarn so this will not go in the wash it will be washed by hand but because it, it's it's funny because people are like single ply socks really but it's a really strong yarn like I was trying to break it off with my hands and it, it, it is a strong yarn and I think it will hold on with wear quite well um i'm testing this one out i'm not sure that i love the um ribbed sock all along the bottom of the foot because i think that my gauge in, in ribbing is a little loose compared to my gauge in um in, in uh, stockinette and it might create holes faster. And I'm a person that, unfortunately, I create holes in my socks all the time. Some people can wear same socks for 10 years. I cannot. My socks absolutely have holes. And they're all at the bottom of the sole, not in the heel. Bottom of the sole. So we'll see how these ones hold up. Uh, but the feel is, like, ugh, amazing. I mean, like, it's, it's thick. And it's rustic, so they're really warm. It's like wearing uh, slippers, but I wear them and I put my slippers on even though I'm wearing these because I like having warm toes. It's a top-down... Top-down? No. It's a bottom-up. It's a toe-up. <laughs> toe, there's no bottom to a foot. Like, I, not bottom-up, whatever. It's a toe-up sock with a flegal heel. And, uh, yeah, I really enjoy making those. I think next time I would do the flegal heel a little bit short uh, before. So I tried to measure where Andrea tells you to, like, start your flegal heel, which is when you're able to flex your feet and the, the, the sock is at the joint, like at the front of your ankle. But uh, I would do a few rows less before starting the the flegal heel if i had to but the flegal heel is quite comfortable um plan on filming it for a french tutorial soon on a on a regular sock on a, a stocking it socks and as i was looking at them i noticed that i made a mistake that i had not noticed before right now so now i'm trying to find it because i clearly saw it Oh, it's here. Dude, it's right in the front. I have a little lonely little pearl bump. Yep. Well, that's that. <laughs> Not going to be changing that. Uh, and yeah, the colorway are called Recreatec and Sari. S A R I. For those. Um, all the details, by the way, of like the, the, my projects are on Ravelry. So I have the links there. I know some people have trouble with Ravelry, but if you want information and you can't go on Ravelry, please let me know and I'll write the information down. Second, uh, finished item is again, socks that again have been worn. So again, don't mind the fact that they're worn. These are some, um, afterthought uh, socks, meaning I literally did everything afterthought. Uh, they've been cranked for quite a while. I, I knit this on my uh, flatbed knitting machine before I moved, and uh, they were just tubes, long tubes, that I then split the big, it was a, a one big tube, I knit the entire amount that I had, and then I put in toes, heels, and cuffs. Um, what I like to do best when I'm doing afterthought, if I'm doing one long tube, is that I'll cut my tube in half, then I will put, um, generally I'll put it, like, now that I know exactly what my measurements are, it doesn't matter, but if I didn't know the measurements, I would knit one toe first, I would measure that toe to have an idea of how deep it is or how long it is and subtract that to uh, my foot length to, to put the heel in. And then uh, I would probably put my heel in into the sock that doesn't have a toe on, possibly. <laughs> 
heal in first to make sure that if I put the heel in the wrong place, I can, you know, unzip a few rows of the toe or add a few rows if I need to. Um, but that's for socks that I don't know exactly where to put. Now I can just literally now with my socks, I can just measure socks that I already have and just like put it on the tube and know exactly where to cut for an after top heel. And uh, this one is fun because uh, again, don't mind the fact that it's worn. And this one is a heel that looks like a hat. So this is the hat top, some joint heel. And um, I've been hating on um, afterthought heels a lot because I don't like how the peasant heel um, fits. So the peasant heel is basically uh, like doing a wedge toe, but on the heel. And even when I try to add more rows before I start doing the peasant heel, it's never deep enough. And I not, don't have enough space. And so it creates a lot of tension here on my uh on on the diagonal here of my sock uh so i found this one which works really well um and it's called yeah the hat top thumb joint and it's basically knitting until um you knit in the round without decrease until you hit the length of your thumb joint here and then you start doing decrease um, like a hat, you divide your stitches by eight sections and you do um, a hat top decrease until there's only four stitches left and then put the yarn through, pull it tight, you're good to go. And basically it's, it's awesome also for people that don't like to do Kitchener stitch. <laughs> I don't mind at all doing Kitchener stitch, but it's nice to know that there's an option and uh, no it doesn't feel funky uh, once I put it on it looks really funky when you first knit it it looks like a big floppy balloon on your sock but then when you put it on it is perfectly maybe I'll show you you want to see my foot it hugs the foot like this and it has a lot of space and I love it very much so now I will absolutely only be doing this here when I do a um, afterthought heel. The yarn is from a dyer that no longer dyes, so I'm not going to be talking about it too much, but I just wanted to talk about the process of knitting afterthought socks because I think it's fun. If you do have a knitting machine, obviously it's a uh, it's a lot of it's easier to just if you don't want to learn how to do the the this, all the, the whole sock on the knitting machine, you can just crank a tube and then add everything with your hands <laughs> or you could also if you're uh, the kind of person that stresses out over like how much yarn you have if you have a certain amount of yarn left and you don't know if you're going to be able to make a pair of sock out of it you can just like knit a long tube and then cut in half and then know how much you know you're gonna you're gonna be sure to have the right amount for each sock that being said I'm gonna talk about my last finished object oh I forgot to weave in that one I just didn't cut it. Okay. I finished, 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 finished. I just have to block it. I haven't washed and blocked it, but it is finished. My Stephen West shawl. This is the most recent Stephen West mystery knit along, which is the twists and turns. And uh, it looks like a Batman. Like, I don't know. It looks like the shape of it is a funky shape. <laughs> I can't show you all of it because you can never do that with Stephen West Designs. So I talked about it at length, I believe, in the last podcast, but I now finished. I added those little bloop, bloop, bloop. So these are uh, not in the original pattern. I didn't like how this section ended. So that was the last section to be added at the end. And I, it, it was supposed to be more chevron. And I don't know, it, it connected in a weird way. And I wanted to do something that would connect those two sections without having this look. So I searched through the Ravelry projects and I found one person who did this uh, variation, which is just twisted rib in a short row form and um, 
that, that creates those little shells. And then you also uh, put the loops through. So it, it literally goes through this knitting. The knitting goes through the loop. So uh, those loops are not just kind of hanging down with no purpose. Um, I really like it. The colors are amazing. Um, I can't wait to wash and block it to be able to wear it. Because right now, like, all those sections are super, um, you know not very glorious but uh i'm sure i'm gonna love wearing it the yarn is a valence um, by bleu poussière and it is a 100 percent uh non-super wash uh, untreated merino which feels completely different than a treated merino and uh i think it's gonna be a lot of fun to wear i'll probably you know Try and wear it so we can see all the sections is always a challenge but you know it's it's gonna be awesome cozy love um the colorways are rococo for the little pale pink um Ori orion or orion for the the this one and templier for the gray and I what I didn't say I don't think so uh on the last podcast is that Shani from Bleu Poussière she is a natural dyer so she only dyes with natural uh dyes and for me that's like completely crazy that you can get so many beautiful colors with natural dyes but yeah it's almost like the neckline, like this one is, is much longer than it is deep. So I feel like you can wear it uh, a little bit differently. But I can't wait. I can just pop it on the shoulders. Wink. Like that. So pretty happy with that one. I'm pretty sure it's going to be used. And uh, yeah, I'm probably going to go and wash it today. Lay it flat to dry on my heated floor. <laughs> All right, that's done. So then when I finish things, obviously, I move on to new things. So let me talk to you about that. Um, whoops, I don't have all the yarns. Okay, so I started a project that I've been wanting to make forever, um, literally. Like it's been on my queue on Ravelry, I don't know how long. And you will not recognize it because I only have a sleeve. But this pattern is the Ridari. Ridari? Whatever. Uh, Ridari is a pattern by Vidis Yonsdotir for Istex. So technically it's a uh, design with Let Lopi, which is an iron weight soft spun yarn um but i'm using nitty den <laughs> i talked about it before so this is a, a pattern that has this design at the bottom of the sleeve and i really love the little rolling edge before the um, before this so you have the ribbing but before the ribbing you have a little rolled edge which give it the perfect like icelandic look to me and uh the sleeve I'm done with this one. I'm on to the next sleeve soon. I'm going to cast on today for the second sleeve and then I'll do the body and the body has the same bottom, but it is a gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous yoke with three colors, uh, actually four colors, including the main. So I bought this yarn, this new to then yarn from, uh, that was my last, <laughs> uh, purchase from new to then. I'm going to go find the colors because I do have the order pulled up here. Uh, so this color is called Vaca. And, you know, it's this super deep purple eggplant color. And it, it, it looked gorgeous on its own, like beautiful. But I had this in my stash. I had three... Um, three balls of mohair that I was planning for something else that never happened. And I thought, you know what? Now's the time. I just got to knit it because if I don't, if I don't knit it with this, I'll never knit it. So 
um, I went for it. So the, um, this is the, the, these one are held two strands of nutiden plus a strand of mohair. And I think the result is the beautiful. Look at that. The little pops of white of the silk just gives it such fun personality. So that, and then the two other colors in the color work at the bottom of the sleeve, we sleeve were this from the same collection as the purple. And so uh, this wall is called Sinen, and this one is called Tusanskona, Tusanskuna, something like that. And originally I had planned on using some sort of a latte color to, for the third, uh, the third color, but after talking with my audience in French, I decided to add this one because I have so many Nutiden collections. This one is, I, I think it's called Coin Ridge that I got way back when, and I had enough left over. So this is going to be the top of uh, the yoke, those three colors here. And those will not be, uh, there will not, not be mohair with the other colors, just the purple. So it's kind of weird because uh, I decided to not swatch and start with the um, with the sleeve in order to knit a swatch. And uh, as I was knitting, I'm knitting the smallest size. It's it's a you know gender neutral pattern, so I was expecting it to be big, and I want it to be more like a coat style thing. But I was like, this is gonna be massive, so I decided to omit some of the. Um, the increases and I started them a little bit later because I didn't want it to be too too big at the base but then you know it turns out that it's probably as big as my September sweater which makes sense uh, but I definitely stopped the increases earlier I think I have 10 less stitches on this sleeve than what the pattern calls for um, I'm just gonna make sure that the pattern the the top the yoke pattern is a eight stitch pattern so i'm just gonna make sure that my uh sleeves count plus my body count is dividable by eight divisible dividable by eight uh so when i pick up the yoke i have the right amount of stitches to knit the chart so this is that and i it's it's really fun it, it's not a super fast knit because knitting knitting with nitiden is not fast you cannot speed through that you have to knit very uh loosely not loosely but you have to like be mind it's mind it's a mindful experience so it's what i've been knitting on and it's been living because it's been coming the sleeve has been coming with me one thing that i love about knitting bottom up and knitting sleeves first is you get to only knit the sleeve the sleeve is not attached to a sweater so you get to walk around with a sleeve instead of walking around with a sweater and knitting the sleeve so it's been living in this gorgeous purse which is you you'll recognize the style if you uh have watched my channel last week last podcast um, it lives in this, so I put my balls of yarn with ideally my phone and my uh, wallet in here, and it fits like plenty. There's plenty of space to, and there's even you know paperwork and stuff, but here and uh, folds over like that, and then I can just you know with the nutiden it's a little bit tricky. To be careful but i love knitting from this purse because i can just have it uh like this and hang it down and it smells like beautiful leather and it is by Gisabelle b and uh, i'm very proud to be owning this piece of beautiful beautiful work um it's gonna like the patina has started on the back here because it rubs against my body and uh I just absolutely love it. It's felt on the on that part and leather. Love it. And it won't hold into onto weird smells if ever, you know, I have kids. You never know what ends up in my purse. Whatever. So that is that for what I'm currently knitting on. I don't have a pair 
of socks on my needles, which is really rare. But I do have a new cast on that uh, you people that follow my French channel will not have seen yet. And uh, I had I had to cast it on. I just had to. Uh, I'm going to be starting a mosaic knit along. So if you want to participate, uh, I'll find... I'll find a French and English hashtag, maybe, because, uh, yeah, I started knitting mosaic, something mosaic, and I also have two little mosaic projects that I have to start soon that I promised friends to make for them, um, so I, why not why not make a cow out of it? So my knit along is a mosaic knit along, and I started the, you might recognize it, it is the um, shift the shift from uh, Andrea Ma Maori's like mosaic collection, basically. The shift is the cowl. I don't own a cowl. Like this is new to me. I don't own a cowl because I just don't think about making them because I don't think about wearing them. But when I was super cold at home the other day, I thought maybe it'd be nice to wear a cowl inside the house while I'm, you know, chilly. So uh, I took some yarns that I had in stash, single skeins, and I was inspired by... Uh, Melissa from Sonder Yarn Co., who used to be the owner of Espace Trico, she um, talked about, she made the shift cowl, but instead of using three colors of uh, spin cycle and cycling through them the way the shift does, she used one skein of spin cycle dyed in the wool and one skein of another yarn doubled with a mohair. And basically she only held, she only had color A, color B, and that's it. Instead of like shifting A, B, C, uh, so A, B, B, C, C, A, A, B, like the whole thing. So I'm doing the same thing as her. Hmm. So I have this gorgeous spin cycle yarn that uh, was donated to me by Montrico in Sutton um, for a video that I did on my French channel where I compare marled yarns that are in the same style as uh, spin cycle. This color is called Heliotrope, and it's their um, exclusive colorway. So if you want this colorway, you will have to get it at Montrico in Sutton. It's a beautiful boutique. They are amazing. Uh, the owners are super nice. So this was the, the single skein I have of this color. And I want it to be super funky. <laughs> so like, this is, this is funky. Um, and I have this... Uh, pink that's called uh, Alexis on Fire from Bleu Poussière, again, who naturally dyes. And this is also a single, this is a single, uh, singles yarn and is very rustic and very wooly and it's definitely a sport weight. And uh, this is a sport weight, but it tends on the fingering weight side. Um, but I still wanted to add more, so I'm adding this to the pink, and it's, I don't know, it's funky. I felt like giving it a golden hue would, like, tie everything together, I guess, when I get to, like, those more, like, mustardy colors and everything. And this one is, my god, I'm, I'm, I, I, I'm knitting three different, um... Quebecois dyers and no, not dyers, but Quebecois boutiques and dyers in the same project. This one, where is it? This one comes from um, Espace Tricot and it's the Bon Tricot line. It's their own uh, line, and I, I love the tags when when the yarn is in hanks, it looks like hair coming out. So this is the Bliss Mohair, and it's the color Honey Mustard. So, you know, it's gorgeous and uh, this base by the way it's called Brindy. I don't know if she has it in uh, her shop right now I don't believe she does but I, I really love it it's very rustic and beautiful so this is what it looks like together the um, the Brindy held together with the mohair is definitely much thicker than the uh, spin cycle but I don't mind you know it's mosaic yeah, who cares? Like, I don't need to obtain a certain gauge to knit this pattern. I'm just, you know, having fun and uh, knitting my stash. Like, I, I literally, my goal right now is kind of to keep knitting my stash, uh, knitting things that I've been looking at forever. Like, this this 
this wool i've been i've been looking at it forever knowing that i'd like to do something with it because i used it in a sweater but it was so little of the yarn like this was a 115 gram ball i believe and i used like 15 grams so i still had 100 grams of it and i i I just didn't know what to do with it. So this is going to be perfect. It's a little one skein project. And uh, yeah, I'll figure out what the hashtag is going to be for a uh, mosaic knit along. If you want to participate, it's going to be on uh, Instagram and on Ravelry. I have a discussion uh, group on Ravelry. So I'll add an English um chat room i guess and uh on instagram you just can tag me and uh tag the the knit along i will be donating donating a few prizes but that's gonna we'll, we'll come we'll come to that at some point and i'm gonna give us a little bit longer to knit on it maybe i'll end the knit along on my birthday which is the 21st of march i think that's a good idea so that's that I think I think that part will go in the back. Like the construction of that cowl is not something I'm I have analyzed very much, but I think this will go in the back and be seamed up with another part. I don't know. We'll see. So I've been knitting on that. And uh oh yeah. <laughs> I've also knitted a little bit more on this, but um I'll talk about it very briefly because i, I want to show it more when it's actually split for the sleeves and everything uh, split for the the body so this is where my sweater's at from last podcast if you want more information on this one please go check out my first podcast it's the flower by paul tb and i'm sticking all sides <laughs> the front the armholes and now i'm ready to split so i will be uh bound binding off the sleeves uh, steaks and uh, knitting in the round until I'm done cutting the steaks and then putting in a uh, ribbing but this one is definitely one that I need my full undivided attention and my head completely in the game when I'm knitting this so I pull it out when I'm in that mood only which is not what I've been in the mood for in the last few weeks I think that's it. I want to um, thank you very much for watching. I want to uh, let you know that if you um, have questions, if you have requests, if there's things that you would like to know about me, uh, let me know. You can follow me on social media as Clotrico everywhere. The reason being, I don't want to be managing more than one social media account on all of my platforms so if you have questions if you have comments and you want to follow me and you want to see what's up with me clotrico with an s on uh instagram clotrico with an s at gmail.com to reach me through my email uh clotrico on ravelry uh so the un only place i'll be clone it is here on youtube so i can make sure that my English subscribers can come directly to my English channel and my French subscribers to my French channel. So with all that being said, my coffee's cold. I gotta go warm it up, but I uh, hope you had a good time and you had time to drink your coffee or tea or hot beverage with me. And I will see you very soon. Bye. <laughs>